As long as I'm around, you don't have to look directly at your empty pit of a life. Oh, okay, wow. You know what? Maybe you should take it down a notch. No, I, I, I think I'll take it up a notch, shall we? I mean, dysfunction is, after all, what we do best in this family. We got daddy issues, daddy issues, chaos junkie. Mommy issues, more daddy issues, obnoxious asshole issues, then you... You seem kind of weirdly self-actualized, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I'm just so done living, cowering in your little bubble of superiority. So this is the thanks I get for taking care of you for the past five years. Oh, I think you've got that back to front, sweetheart. Oh. Who took care of you since <laughs> Ray walked out? None of these guys gave a shit. Who took care of your little Claire while you bombed every shitty audition? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. Uh, so it this... is good to be back, Mark. I am. Yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it's good uh, to be back and having you back. Uh, Becky's been filling in. Take We took, she took care of like Snowpiercer. Uh, we've been doing Agatha all along. We got the first four episodes, everybody. You probably got it this past week which is awesome. So Becky and I covered all first four episodes. We broke them down. We took about two hours to cover them and talk about them, but we had a good time talking about them. And uh, we will be back to uh, regular weekly episodes come this week. So uh, look for episode five. I put a, a, a thread out there on Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. So that way you can leave your comments if you have any comments and thoughts. Uh, but other than that, yeah, uh, we actually did Joker 2 uh, coverage with Rob, Becky, and myself as well. So uh, you could hear us uh, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, talk trash about that movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, but, I look forward to hearing it. I, look, I, I, I can't wait to listen to the Agatha All Along uh, podcast because I've got it queued up in my player. I just got to awesome. get to it. So. But we we've know we know that we've been ignoring a little bit of Umbrella Academy. This is why we're gonna finish up the Umbrella Academy now in one sitting. Uh we only have episodes three to six to cover everybody. So we're gonna be uh covering those episodes and uh give you our thoughts about them. We're gonna brief over some of them. Obviously, you guys have watched it. It's been out for a while. Yeah. But uh, you could get our thoughts on it and what uh, we liked about it. It is the final season of the show. So, yeah, uh, sad. I, I have to admit, uh, a few weeks ago, but when we, after we finished recording episode two, I watched three and four. I was already a podcast on them, and then I had some health stuff come up, y'all. Yeah. I had to have some surgery, and it was it's a whole big thing. But I did, you know, it, it has been out there for so long. I actually got spoiled on the ending, not the details of how they got there. So I was kind of glad I didn't get spoiled on that. But I did get spoiled on kind of how it ended, and it kind of made me depressed. I was kind of like, ugh. <laughs> that's how they ended it. But I, I, after watching the, the episodes a second time, I, 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 I can appreciate a little bit of how they got there. Um, they still, it leaves some things hanging that we'll talk about when we get to episode six that I think is, is, is a just unfortunate part of the writing that they couldn't wrap everything up, you know, but, yeah. uh, uh, it's, it, it would be, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, 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 on one hand, I'm kind of glad it's over. <laughs> I, I'm glad that they were able to resolve a lot of it. I'll miss the the characters, the actors. They could, yeah, it's a possibility, yeah. and we'll go into it in the end of our final thoughts of uh, the last episode. But with that, we'll go right into episode three, which is entitled "The Squid and the Girl," <laughs> and the synopsis for that, Steve. Uh, the group splits up to find Jennifer. Later on, they pay Reginald a visit, confronting memories that hold critical clues to their mission. Yeah, which is funny because this is a different Reginald Hargreaves, everybody, as you all know, because this is a different reality at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they do arrive at the house, they do see his wife. 
<laughs> yeah, I have to admit, though, I mean, going, you know, starting at the be- I was a little confused at, at the beginning, you know, because it starts with that very, very ni- 80s, 90s kind of, you know, news broadcast with the guys and the and the giant squid. And yeah. I'm like, what is going on? And, and, you know, of course, the girl coming out of the squid, which, again, that's another one of those things that they never explain. How did she get? Oh, whatever. Why was you know, she in there? <laughs> right. How did she get there? We're just supposed to kind of yada yada that away. And uh um but yeah, I uh, <laughs> uh yeah, they they see that they, they realize I think that the the whole point of the last season was to bring back um Reginald's wife and her name is is escaping me now, the, Abigail. the character. Abigail, thank you. Um which that actress I had to keep checking back to go, no, it was not Ricky Lindholm. No. But goodness gracious, she looked like she could have been a twin, in yes. my opinion, for Ricky Ricky Lindholm. Just yes. I was just like every time I saw her, I was like, is that no, I guess it's no, it's not. It's somebody else. But um Waiting but yeah, for so the they see, and, and she's yeah, <laughs> and she's playing, you know, she's playing the violin, she's playing that same song uh that Victor played in the first season to end the world. Uh so it's kind of a, a weird uh, weird uh, juxtaposition there of that uh, of that song being played, but yeah, yeah, it's an odd caveat. Uh, but before we get to that, we we get this wonderful uh, like explosion from Klaus to Allison, and everybody in the group is saying it's like, I love it. I have I have the quote. I have the quote. I know we're not at quotes yet, but but since we're kind of going through these rapid fire, um, I love I love his his moment when he has this this whole you know oh they're talking about dysfunction. He says, "Well, the dysfunction is what we do best in this family: daddy yeah. issues, daddy issues, chaos junkie, mommy issues, more daddy issues, obnoxious a hole issues, and you you seem weirdly self actualized when he Which gets to Lila." Lila. <laughs> Which was Lila. And it was funny when he gets done with all that and, and they're all starting to leave and split up. Lila goes, I'm the best or something like that. Like, <laughs> well, she does fit into the family at yeah, this point, yeah. too. But, yeah, I, I really did enjoy that scene. I, I'm glad he got that quote in there, too, because I, I that was one of my favorite scenes in the episode. Yeah. It's like <laughs> he just he blows up on everybody and because he has to. But uh it's just I love how Klaus winds up, and that's part of the uh, episode that I did enjoy. It's like dealing with his powers again and going back to drugs, a- including stealing from Allison, like the TV and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Claire catches him, and he just kind of shouts at her. And you see, you see that addiction, and and you see for a moment, kind of, uh, you know, he does kind of soften a little bit when he shouts at her, but he still you know, makes her move out of the way and, and let him, let him go. But you can, you can definitely see how that addiction, how he suddenly realizes that his addiction is back. His, not only his, his drug addiction is back, but his just addiction of being, um, you know, trouble. self-destructive, self-destructive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's literally what his addiction is. He, he, he's addicted to destroying anything that makes him happy. And apparently drugs and destruction make him happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's Klaus. We yeah. all love Klaus anyway. Uh, the other thing that I did enjoy was the fact that when they did get to Reginald's house and you saw Abigail and there's this whole introduction and they have this sit down conversation. Victor gets a little bit feisty uh, at a mm-hmm. certain point, pushing to help them to get what they need for help. And Reginald's idea is to go back to the mission that they had where they lost Ben at that time. So they had to go back in their minds. So he, he puts them in these machines and that's where literally the episode ends off at a certain yeah. point. Yeah. And it's like, uh, and it's like they, that's how we see them. We don't really take up and uh, take off from there until the next episode. Yeah. But they leave a few, cliffhang there. Yeah, for sure. But there's still a few more things to, we don't want to, I don't want us to, to not talk about. From yeah, episode Lila three. and five. We got Lila and five hitting, hitting the subway. You know, we get another, we get this, this hint of what's going to come because, you know, we have watched all of the, the, the season now and the whole series. And so we know where they're going to end up. And we kind of see the foreshadowing of where they're going to be when we get to episode five, because we're not even there yet, but yeah. we see the inkling of the beginnings of that 
uh, that re- you know that uh, relationship and what's going to happen there. And we had uh, obviously looking back on it, we can see the foreshadowing from all the way back to episode one when mm-hmm. when Diego got jealous of five, and we can see that that this has been foreshadowing as much as I I'm not a I don't think it, I didn't like it, uh, but I under like I said the, these these were these were episodes that were on repeat viewing made me appreciate the story a little bit more. And I was able to kind of go, okay, I can kind of see where you're going with this. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I know. Um, I, it, but it's like, it, it kind of left a bad taste in your mouth when you first watched it. And then you said, all right, I'll leave it on in the background. And then you yeah. watch it again. You're like, oh, okay. All right. I understand it from this viewpoint. Cause if you leave it on and it, it's looped, you'll see the same scene twice or three times. And then you're like, mm, okay, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to leave episode three though without without talking about Gene and Gene, and uh, <laughs> yeah. the, just the the weird like we finally get we haven't had a dance uh, a dance number uh, in the season yet, and we finally get a dance number in the season. Um, we don't have a family dance number, but we get we get Gene and Gene dancing to Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves uh, by Cher, which is just weird and the whole <laughs> montage with Ben attacking the uh the the complex there and then escaping with Jennifer and we get this this scene of Gene and Gene you know shooting some of their own men yeah in order to let Ben and Jennifer escape which still isn't clear I, I'm still they they jumbled this whole storyline so badly yeah. In my opinion, because they go from one moment of of letting them be together and then not having them be together and then not until the end going, OK, that they do have to be together. And then you've got David Cross, who ends up being not David Cross. And we don't know when he got switched out. Um, yeah, it's like a, but, it's like uh, the movie The Thing yeah, <laughs> for a while. Yeah. And, I'm, and just to like give you a, an idea, folks who watch the. The final season and the last episodes as we're talking about them, it gave me the thing vibes, not only with the effects at the very end mm-hmm. of the episode, but also with how, uh, you know, David Cross is Cy Grossman and, and a reveal of him. Right. And, and yeah. what, what had happened with Gene and everything else. And you're like, wait, wait, what happened? How did that right. happen? And why did that happen? Right. When did, <laughs> when, when did Abigail Hargreaves take over? And obviously we'll get to that later, but yeah. you know, that's when did she take over his, his body? And obviously we know when she takes over Gene's body because we see it happen. But at, at that point we're like going, Wait a minute. When did she? When did she even learn about Cy Grossman? You know, mm-hmm. because we've yeah. seen her at different times. Unless I, it's just it, the whole. It just it. A lot of these these last four episodes, even on watching them again, really felt like the the writers were really trying to jam. We know we're ending this series, and so. We don't care what we confuse you about or what ends up being unclear. Honestly, you know? they, they made it six episodes and they should have made it at least a good 12. To at least, at least to, eight to or 10. Give us a little it, bit, you know? Yeah. Give us a little bit more of what was going on yeah. outside of the, the, the siblings, you know, because again, we don't know. And we'll get to it later, obviously, because we're already talking about it, but yeah, when did that? When did they change places? And oh, so it's uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to move on too far though before we get past. Uh, you know, Diego is actually really a good detective. We see him, you know, he goes through the trash at the the Thibodeau's apartment, and he mm-hmm. finds he finds the redacted documents, and he figures out that it's all about Ben's, you know, the day Ben died in this Operation Jennifer. Which they he starts to put all these things together that in again leads us to the end of the episode where they yeah. go to Reggie's house and they want Reggie to then they realize that this version of Reggie didn't mess with their their brains but even this version of Reggie goes yeah it sounds like something that I would do <laughs> yeah because he's pompous it's the same character but right. he understood it and he sees there's a little bit of a redemption with Reginald through the remaining episodes that we there do is. get. Uh, 
there, there's like some sort of acceptance of Victor at one point, him mm-hmm. fessing up to what he had done to the kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like tamed by Abigail at certain points. She goes, oh, honey, you need some tea. I don't want any tea. Please right. sit down. But let's have a mature conversation about this with the children. And yeah. that, that's what's so interesting. It's it's like this is a different Reginald. You know, yeah. he's still an alien. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the, that's it seems like, you know, he, he's understanding and he's capable of having those human kind of feelings, mm-hmm. which is good. All right. Yeah. And then we could easily move right now into episode four, which is entitled Absolutely. The Cleanse. Yes. After learning the truth about Jennifer, the crew sets out to find her and Ben. Klaus hustles to escape his plight. Five and Lila try to change the past. This was another storyline that I didn't. It, it took me a couple of viewings to really get behind Lila and Five joining up change the past to realize that okay oh yeah i forgot they were both kind of involved with the commission for a while so they knew about using the suitcases to travel back in time and to change the 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 past so i i could kind of see them getting there yeah yeah but at the same time i kind of went really is that But it's been years later after all that they've changed a bit uh, yeah. yeah, five, uh, you know, it, I, I love it for the fact that uh, it, Aiden Gallagher has gotten older, so mm-hmm. he's got a little gruff to him. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's, he's showing a little age to his face and a beard setting in and things of that nature. Uh, we'll get into that when we get to the next episode. But the fact is that, yeah, they, they're able to work together and they know how to. Uh, uh, part of me thought as I was first watching this, the first go around is like, well, because Diego's his uh, his, his jealousy uh-huh. of them and and like fear of like my brother is going to be with her or something like that. What's going on between you two? And right. It, well, you think it's because of this, but it turns out there's something completely different that is viable to it. And um, yeah, they later on. But yeah, I I liked it for the fact that they work together. But mm-hmm. uh, you can still see the how they kind of taunt each other with their yeah, with, and- <laughs> with their with their dialogue. Yeah, and like I said, it just it just kind of didn't it 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 felt like to me. Even even on multiple watches, and, and I, I'm kind of going back and forth on this with the writers because it really felt to me like they were they were forcing Ben and Li- Ben and five excuse me five and Lila yeah to get together. It was like it was like inevitable. Like they were they were they were they were forcing it in there. They were they were forcing us to see. Hey, we're going to show you how these two are going to get together because because we want to get them together because we know we we have to get to that point. To have yeah. that conflict between five and Diego, but at the same time, really, I don't know if that was if it was necessary. It just didn't. I don't know. It just didn't. And again, it, it creates more issues. Like we see, this is the first time you know they travel through the subway, mm-hmm. and five is trying to explain to her that no, I can't travel in time anymore. I can only travel to the same this the same the subway date they say yeah i can use the subway but i have to go to the same it's the same time it's the same date just a different timeline correct you know and and she's like well no it's still in you to travel through time and there that's just kind of again that's one of those it's their powers are kind of mixed up mm-hmm. and it's just kind of yada yada away that all yeah. of a sudden he's able to suddenly go back in time you know with her with, with her helping him i guess mm-hmm. I, I guess is what we're supposed to Understand is that by her adding herself to his because powers, she mimics her the way her her powers work. It mimics or enhances his ability to gather okay. when they're doing. and then he uh, at one point you know it got to that point where his powers would only get him to the subway to go back in time, which is I I find kind of the writing a little bit. Again, and then at the end, at the very end of it, she just says, "Oh no, you can do it!" And just suddenly, he's able to do it. He's able to to just teleport 
yes. in, them into the store. And I'm like, yeah, it just, there's just so many things <laughs> could do. With, like her having the laser eyes all of a sudden, like where did the laser eyes come it's from? Come from, you, you know, yeah. The powers uh, got all mi- mixed mangled. Allison, Allison's uh, is suddenly telekinetic as well as yeah. She could um, use her powers she, mentally and, instead of saying right, it. And we don't see her actually rumor anybody anymore. She does one rumor and she says she could rumor people, but she doesn't actually do it. Do Even it. when she's you know uh, in the next episode when she confronts uh, the drug dealer about Klaus, she's just using telekinesis. She's not using her rumor power. Yeah. On him. So I'm just like, where did this come from? Um, and they find a map. Not I'm not talking about the map on the wall. They find a map on the bench in the subway. Yeah. In the very first subway they go to. Never explained. That map is never we we see that map a couple of times uh in the next episode when when five unfolds it, but we don't ever there's it's never explained where that map came from. It's never how did it get there? Why is it there? Who, like <laughs> I'm just ah. and then the bad guy buries Klaus alive and goes, Oh, maybe in a year or two I'll come back and get you. And I'm like, he's like he can die and come back. So okay, you you don't know you think he's not gonna die in that casket. I guess you don't know if, if he needs food, if he needs, you know, you don't know what the extent of his death and resurrection powers are. Oh, you're talking about Klaus. Yep. yep. Yeah. Klaus, you know, when the guy buries him alive, there's a, there's a throwaway line. You hear the guy say something about in a year or two, I'll check back in with you. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? You're going to check back in, in a year or two with him. Why? What's, <laughs> Why are he you knows giving... Klaus's ability, which is so weird. But, but that's what I'm saying is, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know. He, it just and it just bugged me that I again, I get it. I get the writers wanted to get us to a point where Klaus had to be rescued, and we have to have in the next episode have his yeah. his Kill Bill moment with you know his his Beatrix kiddo busting out of the the uh, coffin moment. But <laughs> like, there's just so many things in here that I'm just like. It doesn't make sense, but it, it, it reminded me actually of a Ryan Reynolds movie that came out years and years ago called Buried Alive. I think <laughs> he was stuck okay. in a coffin. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I, didn't, I haven't seen that one. But yeah, it just—it's just one of those moments where I go I, at the end of the episode when the guy walks away saying something about a year or two. I'm just going, what? so you're just gonna okay? And you know um, yeah. they they show us Ben and Jennifer and and show what happens when they get together and well the that- the one thing that i did enjoy about this is like we like <laughs> i said before the previous episode le- like let like le- leaves us off literally when luther allison victor are with hargreaves and he ha- they have to go back in their minds <laughs> to the one <laughs> that's another thing victor just offhandedly goes well, I want to be part of this. And they're even like, well, though he even, was a part of yeah, the, you're not even, you weren't even on this mission. You weren't, you were locked in the basement when they went on this thing. And even Reginald was like, sure. The more, the merrier. And I'm like, exactly. Going, and Lila and, and <laughs> five are standing there going, okay, I we ain't letting you mess with our heads. Apparently, <laughs> apparently they could share the memories or sh- Victor could watch their memories <laughs> and only the snippet of them. And it, yes, I and, guess. Uh, but it's one of those moments where I go, <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. It's October fourteenth, two thousand six, that they do, do <laughs> go back to, which is the the day that Ben initially died, right? And and they do show they do show Reginald in the basement, or they they do show that Victor was there and that she was told she couldn't go on the mission with them. So yes, uh, okay, it's the Moldova guess... mission that uh, that got cost Ben his life. Uh, we do find out. It's funny too because I'm glad we get to see Pogo back, and he's yes, flying the, the big Pogo. spaceship. Yep, that that brings him to the mission to get there. That Reginald tells them not to open the container. Mm-hmm. They accidentally op- they open the container anyway. Well, ben yeah, is they there. Open, they open it because Ben hears. Well, Ben hears Jennifer inside. That's Correct. why they open the container because Ben hears her and he goes, "Hey, there's somebody in there. We need to open this up." And that's when we 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 find out that Reginald killed Shoots the original Ben both and Jennifer. Of Jennifer yeah. and Ben, yeah, and Ben. 
and uh, and then I, I guess Reginald winds up explaining, and uh, you know, and, and Abigail then steps in and takes responsible, saying that it's all her fault. Uh, she explains that years ago she created a new element, mm-hmm. the marigold, but without realizing she accidentally created a second particle called Durango. Right. Uh, and when the marigold and the Durango, so there's an explanation to it. So uh, when the marigold and the Durango interact, they'll cause the extinction of everything. Right. So and this what is to, what the that's what happened to their is. world. Yeah, that's what happened to their original world. And what, and we see that flashback of Reginald releasing the the leftover marigold before their world was destroyed, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is going to lead us right into uh, the next, the next episode, because we're going to, we're going to find out in the next two episodes really is what this all, because everything in in episode four is setting up for the finale, you know? Yeah. Uh, But the, yeah, to to go back to something that I really found interesting and funny was Mm -hmm. Klaus as a medium. And yeah. doing that for the money so he could pay back this guy. And then he deals with this woman. And that's why he gets stuck in the coffin because it, the, the money was supposedly in there. But he, he allows the husband and he goes, she goes, I need to, I need dick. And he goes, right. we all could use that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then he lets Dick go into his body and obviously they have sex and right. And then it, they get more information. And this is where he's like, Oh, I could get the money from the coffin and blah, blah, blah. Right. But then he's stuck in there. And he, of course, you know, I don't know if it's this episode or the next one when he's still in the coffin and the, the ghost dog is there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's in the next episode. It's in five when they when they get him out. But, but that's, yeah, in, in, that's in what four, was buried that, in there, though. Yeah, we have that very funny that very funny exchange where we have that whole sequence where he he meets her the first time, lets the husband have him, and then he lies to her about or that that's the the first time. Um, and then when she comes back, that's when she comes back and he lies to her about where the money is. Because he wants to escape the basement, he wants her brooch so he can escape the basement, you know. And that's yeah. that's how he he discovered he goes where the money is, and we find out that she ended up she knew he was lying, and so she followed him to the graveyard, and plus the drug dealer followed him, to, and that's how he ends up in the coffin. So yeah, it's a really it's a really funny moment when he says, "Oh, if I can if I can make this much money in just an hour, I'm going to have you paid back in no time." And the drug dealer, you know, does the typical pimp thing where he goes, "Well, you know, this is your rent, and this is for your drugs, and this is for <laughs> this, and this is my percentage, and this is the bouncer's percentage, and this is the doorman's percentage, and oh, you're left with this. So what do you want to spend this on? Do you want to pay back your debt, or do you want some more drugs?" And Klaus takes the drug. Uh, you know, so you you end up you end up getting this moment where Klaus realizes he's stuck, and, and the guy's never gonna. Yeah, gonna, he, that, he, he's literally a prisoner at this point. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, that was one of those moments that kind of confused me because even though okay, the guy gets the money because they have this whole shooting thing where everybody dies except for the main bad guy, you know, yeah. and and so he gets the money. We don't know exactly how much money it was, but he ends up with the money. And but then he he locks he buries Klaus in the grave and you're just I'm just kind of like <laughs> so you're you're burying your meal ticket because yes you do have this big lump of money but you're also giving up all the money that he could make you yes you know I didn't that didn't that whole thing just didn't it didn't it didn't add again. up <laughs> yeah it didn't add up to why would this guy give up all the money that he could make. With Klaus, I mean, how much money was actually in that duffel bag? I don't know. Maybe it was enough that the guy figured out he had enough money there that he didn't need Klaus. He could he could go a year or two without Klaus and then come back and get him. But it's still, it was just one of those. Okay, okay, writers, you're you're just setting us up because you want to get you want to get, you want to move this story forward and get us out of the drug dealer's storyline so that yeah. we can get Klaus back in with the family. So we have somebody rescue him. Get it back mm-hmm. in the family, and then we never have to worry about the drug dealer again. Again, you know? <laughs> he doesn't um, owe anything at the point. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. <sighs> again, everything just setting up for the. But yeah, that's. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so we're. Uh, um, yeah. So that's still that's all episode four. So episode four ends with Klaus in in the in the coffin, and then that leads us right into episode 
uh, five. five. I, I know we're kind of flying along here, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's good conversation. Yeah, episode five is entitled Six Years, Five Months, and Two Days. Uh, this is Lila and Five get lost, traversing various timelines. Meanwhile, Victor and Reginald aim to stop Ben, whose union with Jennifer sets forth a lethal path. Uh, I enough, liked... Yeah, I, I really liked this episode for some odd reason. I did, too. Even though uh, on second watch, I liked it a lot more than than the first watch. Even though... Uh, I think I think on the first watch because it was so quick. Yeah, I didn't feel it was earned the relationship between Lila, Lila and, and, and five. five. Yeah. Um. But on on the second watch and, and watching it just a little while ago, the actually was my third watch watching it just a little while ago. I I when we get the montage at the beginning, the cold open that gives us you know it starts out it says you know six years ago and then five years ago or yeah, or you know, we it gets it starts out six years ago, or no, wait, it's yeah, one year later we we see them we see them traveling the subway and we get those those title cards telling us how long it's been until yeah. we get to the six year mark, and then we get to the six year mark and that's when when five is like, hey, I think we should, you know, stop and 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 take a break, and then they sit they spend months in in this greenhouse world where they're surviving together and living together yeah. and, and we had, they're having all this fun time and she's shaving him and they're, yeah, you know, the, and they're, the, the, the key moments I took away were them playing chess mm-hmm. with their makeshift chess set <laughs> that they had that yeah. looked like something from Monopoly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but it was and funny I've, when she, when she changes the pieces, when he looks away and when he looks back, you can tell, you can tell, definitely on the second watch, you can tell that he knows exactly what she did. He knows yeah. that she just yeah. cheated, but he kind of smiles at it and, and, and lets it go. And, uh, yeah. and then they, they keep going. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Five, I, I pulling the glass from Lila's foot, the shaving, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, and you can see the closeness in them. Uh, yeah. His hair gets really, really long at this point too, throughout it. And then, uh, they they were you could see it's like you know they kept saying that they were on this train constantly going all through these different timelines right and they couldn't really stand it anymore they're like they're at that point where it's like I smell I stink I need a shower I need a bath I need some place to stay well what about right. that wonderful timeline we stopped off that had all that greenery and strawberries. And yeah, stuff and there like was no that. wild hogs, and there was no secret police, and there was like you can you can see they've been through quite a few timelines, quite a few different. Because like I said, he says there's no wild hogs there, and there's no secret police. Yeah, so you can you can tell they they've had moments of which that would be an interesting uh, series to do to show us all the timelines they went to yeah. they'll never do it but that would that would be kind of interesting to see the different the different uh, it would be very sliders like i think uh to see all the different timelines they go through trying to find one that was going to fix yeah. their timeline it, it's you know? very similar to what, like what we were discussing and talking about with dark matter too because it's mm-hmm. very similar in that aspect with yeah. the different uh times and alternate universes that they have and yeah. different versions of themselves, but in this case, they didn't have any. <laughs> they, yeah. It was just them going on different times. Yeah, yeah, and that's that would be interesting too because we know that they have at least encountered one version of him in in one of the timelines. Because remember, the very first timeline they go to is his apocalypse, and yes. he's the one who's shooting at them. Because remember, he has the whole farting thing. So, yes. uh, you know, we could have definitely had we could have definitely had some timelines where we saw them meet each other. We could, or like what we see with the diner mm-hmm. um, in the next episode, where he meets all the other fives that have tried to to stop things and haven't been able. Yeah, to Yeah, the it council done. of fives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, cool. yeah. So we finally we finally get this moment in episode five where he finds he finds his diary and he realizes what that is and he realizes that oh this with this diary we can now get home which i uh, again the only thing i can think of is because he was writing down what the station looked like so now they could find the exact station that is their original timeline is that is that what you got from that that's what i felt yeah okay when when he found the diary he's like because i remember him writing down this is what this station looks like it's got these burnt out bulbs it has this poster it has this 
this kind of thing. So that would give them a, a touch point to be able to find their actual home timeline. So, okay, yeah. that makes that makes sense. Particularly after several years, if he's however long he's been without the diary, they would have forgotten what that station looked like. So that, that makes sense to me, I guess I can, I can track with that, but it's, it's, it's kind of, again, that's a, it's kind of a, a yada yada moment that she just grabs the book from him and he tries <laughs> yeah. to convince her to stay, you know, but then the very next scene we have them walking up to Diego's house or the very next time we see them. Now we have some other stuff happen in between, but, uh, but the next time we see Lila and five, they're arriving at, Diego's house and we're like okay well I guess they found it you know <laughs> like yeah uh, exactly like, right. I guess that was pretty easy um but yeah so again it, it just I, but we get to get to what you were talking about with with Reginald this is this is the episode where we see we see Victor save Reginald's life there on the road where he kills all those all those uh, uh, um, all those keepers you know, and then when they're in the car, he says to him, you should have been in a uniform. And I'm very proud. You're probably the best of all of them. And you see that little smile on Victor's face or that little that that moment of of pride that yes. he gets when he realizes that he's finally accepted me, which is all that Victor's ever wanted. That's what he's been asking for these several years. You know, when when they showed up at Reginald's house in the last episode. Uh, they asked Luther asks him, you know, you never you you never join in on the, the family reunions. You never meet us. You never send anything for the newsletter. Why are you here? And and he's like, well, because I, I need to confront him. I need to talk to him about what he did. And yes. so we, we get that moment in the car where Reginald acknowledges Victor. And, and I think that was that was very and that's really, really cool. Yeah, that that's that was the the scene I was talking about. You know, the that Reginald give him props mm-hmm. about that. You know, it's like, and it and you could see it, the elation on F- Victor's face at that point of like, I I got, oh wow, Dad accepts me and I, and gives me credit and yeah, and it's not his dad, <laughs> right? But it's still it's enough. It's a version of Reginald that uh, is giving him uh, what he's always wanted. So yeah. I, I think that's, that was really, really cool. And, and of course we have uh, the moment of uh, Claire and uh, Allison saving Klaus from the, the, the <laughs> coffin, you know, yeah. his, he has his, his Uma Thurman moment that he talked about breaking out of the, the coffin and, and you have the dog pissing on the, the headstone, which the ghost <laughs> dog peeing on the headstone was, was kind of, kind of different. Uh, I really, I was hoping to kind of see that dog again to see if maybe he was going to follow them around for the, the, the next couple episodes, but he didn't. So yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, I thought that would have been kind of cool for Klaus every now and then to acknowledge that Thunderbolt uh, was there, but you know, maybe they didn't have the CGI budget uh, at that point. <laughs> um, Uh, and of course, we also have Ben and Jennifer. Yes, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Not to go back to Ben Affleck and yeah. uh, Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we find out that Ben does have some money. He says, "Let's just go away. I've got money, ca- uh, you know, stashed away in the Cayman Islands, and I know a, a pilot in Florida." That if we if we can get down there, we can go and get this money. Of course, they're they're not going to make it there before the Marigold uh, causes them to merge and, and have their their moment, but we do get that, that, uh, that idea of, of he, they're thinking about a future together. Yeah. It's as if they were meant to be together. Maybe the whole time, <laughs> which is odd too, because if you think about it, their, their powers are pretty much very similar. So it's like, it, it made me think at one point, I'm like, well, would this be an alternate version of Ben in this timeline? And she's just a version of it, but why would she be in their original timeline? And then that's what caused the chaos altogether, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's a, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. That's a, that's an interesting point to, of of why. Uh, but I think, and again, this is one of those things that, that when we get into the next episode, I really want to to explore because one of the one of the problems I have, and I guess we're kind of starting to, to edge into. Uh, episode six, six. So, now. Yeah. Um, my problem with the way the series ends is 
they they make it very clear that they have to get rid of all the marigold, right? Yes. And so there's a problem though because I I kind of listened to a little bit if you go all the way back to the first season, the first episode, I don't remember the exact number, was it 36 women, 37 women across the globe, something like that. Something yep. like that got pregnant spontaneously from this marigold that we find out now that it was it, it was Reginald releasing the marigold into the world that caused these women to get pregnant which caused all these alternate timelines to be created. Correct. So we have our six Umbrella Academy members. Then we have Lila and Jennifer. That's eight. So yeah. there's 20, almost 30 other people still out there with marigolds. <laughs> so you haven't really gotten rid of all the marigolds. <laughs> you haven't really gotten rid of everybody yet, too. Yeah. So I'm kind of like going... We're just yada yadaing away the other 30 or the other 20 something kids that are out there with powers. <laughs> yeah. You know, that uh, it just, again, that was one of those the things that bugged me because I didn't, it, and this is, this is something that multiple watches made me, made me pick up on because of the first watch, I didn't even think about the number of other kids that were out there with powers. It wasn't until the second watch that I went, wait a minute, aren't there a bunch of other kids still out there that should have powers that would be, but okay, I guess, I guess the only ones we care about. Are the, the ones the Hargreaves that we know yeah, are the Hargreaves or, and, or the Sparrows? And the, yeah, and the fact <laughs> that they've they've now interacted with this Durango. I don't. It, again, it was just <laughs> weird. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, but okay. So here here we go. Episode six. Episode six. Well, before we get into that, we have Abigail, and we we get the disguised as Jean. Yes, we do get that. We get the moment when we when we see uh, Cy Grossman come out of where where. And again, this is we we started to talk about this earlier, so we can talk, we should talk about it now. Yeah. When did when did when did she take over Cy Grossman? Because we have yeah. no clue when that happened. Because we never saw it happen. We so. never saw it. Was it so? Obviously, it's either sometime before he walked into the Chickadoo restaurant correct or it's sometime in between uh, but yet he got into the chickadoo restaurant because he had the pass phrase so how did she know the how it's long weird. has she been cy grossman has she been cy grossman the entire time and we just didn't realize she was able to go back and forth we don't see her go back and forth between but maybe i don't know again it was one of those those plot moments in the writing that i go wait a minute when did she when did she take over Cy Grossman's body? Because yeah. this makes no sense. We know we know that when they left the house, they left her at the house. So obviously it's sometime after the, I don't know. It just <laughs> that was another one of those things that you go, okay. I guess we're just supposed to accept yeah. that at some point she took over Cy Grossman's body. And so she, you know, Gene has his moment, his macho moment of standing up to Cy Grossman. And then, but then, of course, again, he comes back and and he but, stands and up to looking at Abigail and what her powers were too, like a tentacle coming out and going into it again, too. very similar to Ben's power. Did she Correct. what like what you is know, the and, uh, and, relation to that? And where where did she have this power? To like we never, I guess, I guess Reginald, uh, maybe that's what they're alien beings were because remember Reginald is this insect like is actually they're both actually this these insect like aliens that just have a, a human yeah I don't know it's just it's weird it's one and of those things that I go it's, it's not like uh, where we had Grace who is mom to them in, in their world or their timeline. The, the well, she was a robot. Grace was a robot. robot. Yeah, right, I know. Right. And, but like I said, we see, we see that Reginald is this insect is this actual insect who has kind of like in the men in black movies to where they have, he has a human suit. Yeah. He's wearing a human suit, you know? And so we can, we can, we can establish that. Okay. Abigail would be the same thing. She would be this insect with this human suit. And so she can put different human suits on, but we, we only see her have one human suit. Well, no, because she takes at the end of the episode, she takes off the, the gene suit and underneath it is the Abigail suit. So 
<laughs> it's wackadoo. Uh, again, <laughs> it's just it's just the writers feeling like they had to rush to you know finish everything up, and and so we're just gonna we're not gonna bother with why this is happening. We're just gonna make it happen. And yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, anyhow, um, we, we should it. lead right into episode, episode six, six. Yes. end uh, of the beginning with <laughs> Ben and Jennifer in peril and the cleanse underway. The family unites for one last fight to save the world and end the infinite devastation. Yeah. As much as I'm crapping on these, these episodes, I really did. I, I liked it. I, I for, I totally forgot. I, I'm going to admit when I watched the episode six the first time. When I watched it again today, I had totally forgot about the diner delicatessen uh, ep, uh, scene w- between all the fives. I had totally forgot about it until I until I saw him come out of the subway and walk up to the delic- delicatessen, or until I saw him in the subway and he sees another version of himself outside. I went, "Oh, that's right. He's going to go meet all these other fives." Mm-hmm. Now and he's going to find out, you know, that 142,150 or whatever the number was, uh times that they've actually saved the world, but they've never actually saved it. You know, they they've saved it all these times, but it just keeps getting it keeps ending again and, and you you can see when they they showed us the pictures on the wall you know, you saw we saw the one of uh, season one with the moon being destroyed and uh, mm-hmm. a couple others that we recognize. But uh, uh, you realize that this has been happening for a much longer time than what yeah. we even know about, because all these fives are in this diner because they've given up. They basically go, OK, we're not we can't we can't do it. So we're just going to spend the rest of our eternity uh, in this diner uh, forever eating whatever diner food and uh and everybody is a different you know brisket five and the, <laughs> the, the server five and and stuff like that you know so uh and the you know the numbers five and all that i thought was i thought it was a great scene it was it was really it gave us a lot of talking of of explaining well here's what's going on you know and then we have our five go well i'm gonna go see if i can fix it you know and uh the pastrami five going, all right, good luck with that man, <laughs> you know, and just kind of sending him on his way. Uh, I love how it actually starts too, because that's when Gene and Gene quote unquote, start the, um, <clears throat> the uh, call for everybody. Mm-hmm. And then everybody turns on their radio and it's the same song all across, which is the call. It's like a radio station and it's a song by the muse called map of the problematic and uh that's what signals everybody to do what they need to for the keepers yeah we get call. this big group we get this big group of of people getting their guns and their weapons and all their, and they have a their... reverse umbrella academy tattoo on them mm-hmm. if you look the umbrella is upside down it yeah says it's inverted up yeah. So. Oh, we totally forgot in the last episode. I don't know why it, I totally skipped over this. Was uh, Diego and Luther's at fight. the CIA? Uh, yeah, at the CIA. Yeah, and they said with- it's like, oh, isn't this where everybody goes to like relax? These guys are like it. <laughs> it it's it reminds me of Scully and a bunch of Scully and Hitchcocks from Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> yeah, that don't do anything in the CIA uh, office, but they they infiltrate it. They go in there, and then next you know a, a fight erupts, and then oh, Victor gets really. <laughs> brutal in this and then he he loses his pants of course he loses his pants diego loses his shirt so we have a shirtless diego and a pantsless luther uh fighting together you know they do that whole wacky uh, yeah. uh secret kinda, agent kinda, man yeah, is playing as they're doing it yeah uh, luther winds up really killing somebody really good with a fork to the head yep yeah, uh, we have Diego really cool- is showing his prowess, but the funny thing is, is when his shirt does come off, he goes, "What?" He goes, "Oh, they do that because yeah. they're stripper clothes. They tear yeah. away." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all the stripper clothes that Luther has. <laughs> what did you give ribbons a laugh dance? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so yeah, and that was in the elevator when he beat them, yeah. and he, he walks yeah. out. And they're all bloodied on the floor in the elevator too. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was it was great. But yeah, that was another one of those musical moments that we had. Uh, we have, like you said, Secret Agent Man playing while they're while they're fighting, and he gets the one he gets the one guy to to bash the agent in the head with the the fire extinguisher, getting him to help him out. So it was really really kind of cool uh, to see that kind of slow horses. I've been watching slow horses on Apple TV uh, here recently, and that's kind of what that basement reminded me of is the oh, the, really? the, the, the slaw house for for these washed up agents who don't have anywhere to go. Um, uh, so we're going to put them in this basement area and uh, uh, call them Section R, uh, you know, or, or for... like the TVA and mm-hmm. Loki and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. things of that nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was really, really cool. But, um, you know, back to the diner scene, we, we find out in the diner scene that it was one of the fives who well, we already knew that five had started the commission. But now we know why was that. The whole point was they were tr- that that five whoever started that commission was trying to restore the original timeline and it never did work out uh, work out even for him. So uh, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool to get that that call back to to five being the one who started the commission because we heard that uh, either in season two or three I can't remember where we found out that I think it was season three where we found out that five had actually started the commission uh, and but now we know why that it was to restore the original. Uh, timeline so yeah good stuff in there and and they ended it they ended it well as much as i hate that they had to but at at that point the writers had written themselves into where the only way they can end it is with letting basically letting them be forgotten um Mm. although it is kind of cool to think that you know and that's that that's a great exchange at the end there when lila when Lila and Five come back and she sees Diego and she tells Five it's over, you know, but you realize that, that she really does love Diego. She loves her family. Yeah. And Allison asks about Claire and she says, don't worry, my family will take care of them. Wherever they end up on that subway, you know, I think they'll, the, that's what she's saying is wherever they end up on that subway or if they end up riding that subway forever – that her she'll never be alone. She'll always Correct. be with yeah. with Diego. And yeah, that Lila's was their family. way of trying to uh, save the rest of their extended family. Yeah, and that was pretty cool. Uh, then you know, when then we get Ben and Jennifer uh, during the whole coming together situation, <laughs> like a, a Cronenberg Brundlefly. Yeah, the yeah. thing. Uh, John Carpenter's the thing, kind of right. coming together, kind of massive. And, yeah. and then you got Victor involved and uh, Ben pushing Victor away at a certain point. And they, they wind up going back in time several times to fix and fix the situation, it seems. I don't know if they went back in time. I think the, the, the point was just to, to that she that not she he uh, Ben showed Victor what would happen if they let they let it in and it wasn't it wasn't that they went back in time it was that sh- that uh, ben showed victor showed him that hey this needs to happen because the only way is to erase your so they kind of went back in time and that they erased their, their own existence, existence. yeah because yeah. they stopped they basically they stopped <sighs> And again, they don't really show how they did this, how they don't really show how this happens. Yeah, I'm now I'm confused because how how would how would Ben and Jennifer merging all of their powers merging together on August 12th? Because we have that narration where Reggie says August 12th, 2024, nothing happened. Um, How would them merging all together? cause the marigold to never have been released by Reginald on his world that was being destroyed. Now my brain is starting to hurt. Yeah, I know. Cause it's like, uh, where do we go? How, <laughs> how did that, how did that solve? Oh, now I am confused. How did that solve the, how did that stop everything from, how did that put everything right? That doesn't make any sense. Across well, several universes and yeah, several how timelines. Would that cause, how would that cause them never to ex- have existed mm-hmm. unless they went, oh, now. They would now have had brain. to go back in time to do something to change it all. And that's, but we didn't, they didn't show, 
Oh, now I'm so confused. And yeah, Pandler's, same here. If if somebody has an answer to this, that would be great because now now I'm now I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, you're right. Why did why did them choosing not to say like like basically what they were saying was choosing not to stop? Sorry, my brain is exploding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like, how did them? That doesn't make any sense. Why would them not? Not stopping the world from ending caused the world not to end. I, I think at the very end, because at the ver- way it, it, it ends, they they put them on the train, uh, on the subway, blah, blah, blah. The monster that is considered Benefer uh, gets close to the siblings as Five and Lila blink back. And as they all wait for their deaths, uh, Luther suggests... Uh, going around in a circle and sharing their favorite moments of one another as uh, that's shot down very fast. Yeah. And they say, we're not going to do that. And yeah, they say, we're not going to do that. <clears throat> yeah. And then um, they all power up and say their final words as the monster takes over the house and, and swallows up the siblings. And then it just cuts to the original timeline, which is pretty much like a, a vision of Ben tried to show Vic, what Ben tried to show Victor and then we see Lila's family, Lila and Diego's kids, Claire, all together in a park, looking all happy see, and like nothing happened. Are you sure? Are you sure that was because I really okay? I if that's if that's the case, I really tried to see. I saw people from the commission were there, like that woman with the glasses. Yeah, the handler. Was there, and I really tried to see if that was supposed to be Claire. It really, it kind of looked like Claire, but was it? Was that? Was that their family? I in think the park so. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can kind of see that maybe I, that still doesn't explain how they got there. It's but it, it, it's weird because and then obviously that's it and then credits roll. But we have an after credits moment, which is really weird because in the post credit scene, I I cut this from a, an article I got. It says okay. in the post credit scene, the camera cuts to yellow marigolds, which I remember blooming in the park and spewing out yellow particles. So oh, I the, missed that. I, I guess I never never watched it far enough to the end to So yeah, the, the cleanse did happen and there's still Marigold somehow in the original timeline, meaning it's all going to restart anyway. And the Marigold okay. has been released, so we can assume it will be begin entering bodies and causing babies to be born with superpowers once more again. And, and with, just there won't be any but there won't be any Reginald around to, to I don't this, yeah, that gather them together. That still so, even makes it more confusing to me. So no, they, just, they, they leave it at the end uh, of this this notation on this article saying, was what the Hargreaves sibling did all for nothing? And it says, well, maybe in the end, but they also buy a lot of time for the next group of superpower siblings who will. And it says, no doubt, save the world multiple times. So basically, it's just restarting a whole new yeah, cycle. like I said, I, I must have not never watched it far enough. I saw the credits roll with all the pictures of the cast and yeah. the crew pictures and stuff, and I just never watched past that because I just figured I didn't know there was a post credit scene with the Marigold. That that makes it even even more confusing to why they would put that. That's just it's kind of like at the very end of Snowpiercer when we finish that and you see the uh, flower in the snow. Remember? Right. So. Yeah, I, I have. I need to finish. I need to finish Snowpiercer. I have it. Oh, I you mean, didn't finish it? No, uh. I haven't finished it yet. I, I'm still. I'm still working. It's. It's. Uh, but no, that you're not spoiling anything for me because I, I. I suspected that was they were going to end by showing that the Earth is going to come back. I just. I don't know how they get there. So that right. make, that's that's cool. I, I'm. I'm excited to 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 finish finish up that series as well and uh, at some point. But uh, uh, yeah, now I'm even more confused about this ending of the Umbrella Academy and. and <laughs> Uh, that's well, ridiculous it well just, that is our coverage everybody so of uh the remaining parts of the final season of hopefully uh, we have not left you more confused than when you started this podcast or confused ourselves <laughs> or as i am now more confused than when this podcast started exactly um, <laughs> but uh yeah well, well that's pretty much our episode and uh as far as like news or anything um, one thing I found I found interesting. I we got kind of got cut off everybody for uh, Joker two when Rob and Becky and I were t- covering that because silly me didn't clean up a lot of hard drive space, so my Zoom just got out <laughs> and then we didn't get to finish up majority of it. But 
Uh, as you all know, I had covered Monarch Legacy of Monsters with Ben mm-hmm. Beck on uh, Wilhelm, which was a collaboration with Podcastica. And uh, we covered Monarch, which, but we got uh, a little bit of information for that particular one. If you want to go back and watch season one of Monarch, uh, Amber Mid Thunder, uh, Mid Thunder has been cast in Monarch Legacy of Monsters season two. And if you remember, oh, yeah, and, she's on Legion. She was in Legion and she was in Legion and mm-hmm. she was also in what else? Uh, wasn't she in the the, the Predator sequel or something? Yes, she was. She was in. She did the 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 one that the Predator the the Predator prequel. Yes, that you and I were going to cover, but we never actually did. Cover. We never got yeah, to it. But um, yeah, I remember her from that too. But yeah, she she was in she was in that as well. What was that called? Prey? Was it just called Prey? Prey I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, and really that did well movie. too. And they actually want to do another film, apparently. Okay. So yeah, I like I like her. She was really great in Legion, so I look forward to seeing Monarch season two to yeah. see how that to how that shakes up. And I think they have got uh, uh, Wyatt Russell is no, not Wyatt Russell is is anyway somebody's coming back. I'm sure. I, <laughs> I, I think the majority of the cast has come back. Yeah, maybe not Kurt Russell. Maybe not Kurt, but yeah, we'll have to see if, if uh, uh, what they who they bring back and and stuff for it. So yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So uh, that's all we have as far as news. Um, except for, you know, we mentioned it before, which is pretty funny. Uh, Batman got his, uh, star in Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is pretty oh, funny. Oh, good for him. So, uh, that, is, and then my, a friend of mine asked me, he goes, is he the only fictitious character? I was like, no, Godzilla's got one there too, pal. <laughs> yeah. He was like, oh, I hadn't man. heard that. I hadn't heard that. So that's, that's cool though. That's cool. They gave Batman a, a, a star on the Walk of Fame. That's great. But, uh, yeah, and then obviously, a uh, few listeners, there's more stuff to come out. We're going to be continuing and finalizing Agatha all along. I believe there's, what, nine or ten episodes? Uh, uh, I'm not sure how many episodes that I, was. I looked I'm, it up I the other night, and I, I believe it was like about nine or ten, which is pretty okay. cool. That's so, great, yeah. So I, I look forward to that, uh, finishing up that, and then us bringing you more content. A little bit different, something to pull from the well of older movies or shows uh, because as far as whatever else is coming out, we will let you know. Um, Steve's got a few ideas and thoughts that we could do. Yeah. We got some stuff coming up and and 2025 is going to be a big year. Uh, Well, maybe not big year for Marvel, but there's a few things coming out in 2025 for Marvel. So yeah. Yeah. Marvel, other, other uh, shows as well. And then uh, that's about it for news. Just to give you an idea. Uh, we didn't really get any feedback for this because it's been so long since we put anything out for this. Yeah. So we apologize. But for those of you that want to send any sort of feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We always leave an image for what we're covering. Obviously with Agatha and when we were doing Snowpiercer, I was putting all that stuff in there. Whatever goes to Facebook goes to Instagram. So usually I state, just put your, thoughts and comments in in the uh comments below the image and then uh we'll definitely read them on the the podcast uh same goes if you send us an email which would be greatly appreciated a regular texted email is always welcome and we'll read that or if you wanted to record yourself you could do so and just send that as an attachment and so it's as if you're on the podcast yourself and we can make comments and listen to you and your thoughts as well and you can easily send those to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels is spelled out panels to TO pixels and the number one at gmail.com. And then uh, we will put that on when we next record. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything that we're currently doing, it could be something that we've done in the past before, which we've done before, like when we recently got some feedback through uh, adrenaline cinema podcast of all things. Somebody sent something through YouTube on a comment. So we brought that up on um, when we did Mayfair witches and uh, I brought it up because somebody was talking about interview with a vampire from an older episode. And I got like a message comment pop up and I'm like, Oh, okay, well we'll talk about it. So as you all know, we are on YouTube, YouTube podcasts, Regular YouTube, it's always a static image. It's the whole podcast, but you can always comment on it. So all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. 
So keep that in mind. It's Panels to Pixels podcast. If you go to straight to Panels to Pixels, you get the other pretty guy from over the seas uh, across the pond. And that would be uh, Josh. And uh, I like his show too. So subscribe to him as well. But please subscribe to YouTube, ring the bell to get notified, and uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. And of course, if the, you know, there's always, uh, you know, ratings or reviews for because we could be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, a whole bunch of other podcast players of choice, but preferably Spotify or P- Apple Podcasts. Give us a five star rating or review; it'd be greatly appreciated. And then leave some comments. Uh, we haven't had some in a while, but it'd be greatly appreciated if you did. But other than that, that's our uh, episode, and we'll be back again. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night.